Bailey. He's joining us from Fig Securities. Mark, good morning to you. Are we potentially on the precipice of the latest crisis for the EU? Uh, good morning, Dean. I guess we kind of seem to be perpetually on that uh, cliff edge for the last um, several years. Um, I think in terms of the, the Austrian election, I think that's probably um, as, as least as important as the Italian referendum, you know, as you rightly point out in terms of your introduction that, you know, the, the far right Freedom Party has got a very, very good chance of, uh, of winning that uh, election and then obviously what that means for that country inside the European Union is still very much up for debate. But also in Italy as well, also on Saturday, you have the, uh, the referendum there in terms of the constitutional referendum and you're know, trying to change the way that uh, the Italian uh, government is elected uh, and how those uh, the different houses of, uh, of, of parliament are uh, represented and trying to make it a bit more stable in terms of the government situation there. But there's, there's stories as well that I've read in, in the Financial Times talking about, you know, if uh, Renzi does lose the uh, constitutional election on Saturday, you know, that has some major implications for the banks and then obviously that feeds into, you know, the banking system inside uh, the European Union. So, th and then you, you look to next year, and as you rightly point out, you've got the French elections, you've got the German elections later on in the year again, you know, which, you know, given what we've seen with Brexit and, and Trump, you know, have the, the possibility of throwing up some uh, kind of s what, what would probably be like un unlikely situations in terms of who uh, who actually uh, comes to power there yeah. again, again you know and i think that's helping what what you're seeing in terms of the euro uh, us dollar cross in terms of some of the weakness on the euro side which is obviously counteracted by some of the strength on the uh, on the dollar side with trump coming in uh, potential fiscal spending yeah. higher, higher interest rates coming through many many moving parts it's so interesting that it appears as if politics has become the new economics uh, when it comes to market moves, determining market direction. But uh, underlying it all, of course, is central bank action, which has been just so influential over the past few years at all uh, as well. And we had over the weekend the governor of the Bank of Greece. Now, he's also on the ECB Governing Council, Yanis Sourinas, excuse my pronunciation. We've got a quote actually to show our viewers saying that it's far too early to consider the gradual removal of monetary stimulus. So, Mark, I mean, putting it all together, what does this mean for policy divergence? What does this mean, these comments coming from the ECB, um, when you've got this backdrop of political instability? Well, I think, I think again, I think it kind of reinforces where we are in terms of the, the divergence between Europe, which is you know, potentially thinking about continuing quantitative easing and maybe extending that or at least not tapering it uh, into 2017. And on the other side of the Atlantic, you've got the US, which is probably in a more stimulatory mode in terms of the fiscal side of things, probably higher interest rates, so tighter uh, monetary policy there uh, to try and potentially rein in some in inflation that may or may not come through. But again, I think it highlights the the risks inside that European Union in terms of the single currency. And, you know, who knows how that Brexit uh, decision will go. I mean, Theresa May is still pushing for that uh, end of March deadline. There was some 81 MPs in the UK that wrote to the EU President Donald Tusk uh, at the weekend, basically asking for reciprocal re uh, residential rights for UK uh, citizens in Europe and, and vice versa, that they want to get those sorted out before they even start and trigger the Article 50. Mm -hmm. You do have that um, supreme court starting to sit on I think it's on the 5th uh, or 6th of December as well in the UK in terms of sitting on whether they have to put that uh, article 50 through Parliament the uh, outcome is, is likely in the new year so again there's a lot of the as you say political risks that are impacting the markets but I think that's the the right thing to do because at the end of the day the central banks have to manage all those political risks yep. uh, and I think in the in the European Union it's certainly the case that you're going to see continued weakness, continued um, uncertainty across a whole range of countries. Mm -hmm. And with that backdrop, if you're, a, if you're a big business, how do you really start to invest? How can you say this is a capital expenditure plans for 2017 with certainty? So I think businesses, again, will become unsure and will pull back, as they have done over the last few years in terms of capital decisions, and consumers will be wary as well. Yeah. Uh, it's so interesting because we do hear from Mario Draghi, the ECB president tonight. He'll be addressing European Parliament and his brief is to talk about Brexit and its likely impact in the EU. But um, obviously any talk of bond tapering seems uh, quite distant. Um, 
also interesting is we get four inflation reports due from Europe's four largest economies this week. So again, really speaking to what you were just mentioning about business in Europe, what do you anticipate these inflation reports will reveal about growth in Europe? Yeah, I mean, I'd be very surprised if you do see kind of any kind of sign of inflation. I mean, the overall uh, EU um, area for inflation is around about 0.5%. Uh, so it's, it's not, it's not going to be anything, I don't think, that's going to alarm the ECB in terms of where its policy needs to be. And I think it probably just reconfirm that there's just no inflation coming through in any of the, the major economies in Europe. And therefore, that indicates that growth is going to be pretty anemic going forward into 2017, which again will allow the ECB to run a fairly lax and continuing uh, probably some kind of monetary stimulus as well in terms of extending QE further into the future. And, and that's what I probably expect will be uh, one of the outcomes comes on the next couple of meetings that we'll see an extension to QE or maybe additional bond buying or different uh, asset classes that they will they will target in terms of their QE uh, going forward because I don't think you're going to see any kind of uh, key risks in terms of those inflation figures that are due out this week. I think they're still going to show it's very low, indicating that growth is still very, very low in, in the European area. And just very quickly, we did see bonds uh, rise on a very quiet day on Friday in the U.S., obviously a short day in the wake of Thanksgiving holiday. Um, when you look at U.S. Treasuries this week, is it going to be sort of the lead up being dictated to the U.S. non-farm payroll data on Friday or, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of economic data on the horizon as well? Yeah, I, I think the key one will be that non-farm payroll data because I guess the key impact for U.S. Treasury markets and bond markets, government bond markets more broadly, will be the, the Fed decision uh, next week and, and the key final hurdle that the Fed probably has to overcome is that non-farm payroll. So unless we see an absolute shocker of a figure, uh, I think the, the, the rate hike in December from the Fed is, is pretty much penciled in. So, But I think in, in that run-up, I think you'll see um, you know, all eyes on that non-farm payroll number and that, you know, kind of all the other economic news will be a bit of noise, but the focus will be on that on Friday's figures, um, you know, where I think the consensus at the moment is around about 170 uh, for jobs created and an unemployment rate of around about 4.9%. Mm -hmm. but, but last week, in terms of um, the U.S. Treasury market, we did see those yields rise, you know, for the third consecutive week, which is the first time that's, uh, and in terms of that's a... Uh, the, the first time that's happened in a, in a considerable length of time. And also you saw two-year and five-year yields briefly on Friday before um, retracing yeah. some of that hit, um, you know, to, uh, five, six-year highs with 10 years at uh, kind of highs that we haven't seen for a year. So, you know, market seems to be positioning for uh, inflation higher rates, and that's certainly coming through in terms of the yield com curve movement since the uh, U.S. elections. Certainly so. Mark Bailey, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks, indeed. Mark Bailey from Fig Securities there. I think